took ye up, and they said unto him, Twelve. And when the seven among the four thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said, Seven. There were two different occasions on which the Lord multiplied food. And on one he fed 4,000, on another he fed 5,000, and both of them had food left over. And just very quickly, I want to run through five principles that we can glean from these two verses, comparing Scripture with Scripture. First, there was more left over than what they started with. They sowed five loaves, ended up with 12 baskets. They sowed seven loaves, ended up with seven baskets. We always reap more than what we sow. Always. Psalm 125, 5 and 6 says, They sow in tears. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goes forth, weeping, bearing precious seeds, shall doubtless come with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. They sowed tears and they reaped joy. They sowed seeds and they reaped sheaves. <laughs> Amen. Second, care is always taken by Christ. Of the broken pieces. Jesus just didn't leave those broken pieces on the ground. He said, gather them up. <laughs> the Lord never wastes opportunities. And you might feel like a broken piece. You might feel like a slice of bread instead of a whole loaf. You might even feel like a crumb. But I want to encourage you to get into the basket because God wants to use you. Amen? Amen. Thirdly, where there was the most, there was the most left when there was the least to begin with. Notice, five, they began with five loaves, but they ended up with 12 baskets. They began with seven loaves, and they ended up with seven baskets. The less of self there is, the more the Lord will bless it. Number four, when there was the most eaten, there was the most left. There were 5,000 men plus women and children, the Bible tells us, that ate five loaves. And yet they picked up 12 baskets. 4,000, there were seven that began with and seven baskets. Whoever has to him more will be given, and, to, and he will have an abundance. Finally, fifth, where there is the most work for Jesus, there will be the greatest reward. There's a lot to serve 5,000 people, isn't there? <laughs> But we see that there was a greatest reward, 12 baskets versus feeding 4,000, seven baskets. Lord says, God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name. And Paul encourages us, and he says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your work is not in vain in the Lord. So as we give this morning, let us remember our work, everything that we sow, never goes in vain in the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we pray that you would just bless these gifts. May they further your kingdom that many lives would be blessed and you would be given the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.
God says, I am just so happy. I was thinking about the word again before. I'm so happy to hear you worshiping me. I have waited so long for you to enter in. And oh, what a delight and a joy it is. It's something that you have to want to do. And you are entering in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And how sweet it is for me to be able to sit at the throne and look down and see this happening, not just here, but all around. Hallelujah. How long I have waited, he says. Can you only imagine, you know, what we're doing here right now is so special. And God is using it tremendously. And it signs, wonders, and miracles, and everything are beginning to come forth. They will continue, and they'll get greater and greater. But can you only imagine, thinking about now that we're getting even closer to God, and feeling his presence, his anointing, is growing upon us. The anointing breaks all the yokes. But can you only imagine what heaven's going to be like? Heaven. We're almost home. 
Hallelujah. So it's something, you know, that we got to keep in the back of our minds, you know, for, or I should say foremost, and be excited about that as well. This song talks about that. Got to change gears now, okay? So be blessed. You can join in with me. Now, I want you to get right in there and don't wait till the song's over with and think, man, what a great song. Da, da, da. Get right in there with me from the beginning. I can't wait, my brother. We're almost home. I can't wait, my sister. We're almost home. This home that I'm awaiting, well, it's worth my anticipating. And I can't wait to see him face to face. Thank him for his saving grace. I know, I know we're almost home. The city that I'm headed for, there is no more time. No sickness, no suffering, while well, there'll be no more strife. Built by the mighty carpenter from the city of Galilee. I have a feeling that my home will overlook the crystal sea. Just as soon as I get there, gonna find my family. And I'll talk a while with the one who gave his life for you and me. Jasper Walls, Case of Pearl, all the things that are in store. When I wake up in that promised land to live to die no more. Well, I can't wait, my brother. We're almost home. I can't wait, my sister. We're almost home. This home that I'm awaiting. Well, it's worth my anticipating. And I can't wait to see him face to face. Thank him for his saving grace. I know, I know we're almost home. Well, won't you listen to that heavenly choir singing the song of the redeemer? All oh, the crowd's getting so excited. It will be more than a dream. Well, you may find me running up and down that streets of gold. In my brand new body, oh, the last has not been torn. I can't wait, my brother. Come on, I'm going home. I can't wait, my sister. We're almost home. This home that I'm awaiting. Well, it's worth my anticipating. And I can't wait to see him face to face. Thank him for his saving grace. I know, I know we're almost home. Well, I can't wait, my brother. We're almost home. Woo! I can't wait, my sister. We're almost home. This home that I'm awaiting. Well, it's worth my anticipating, and I can't wait to see him face to face. Thank you for his saving grace. I'll be in my new robe of white. I know everything will be just right. I'm going to shout. I'm going to sing. I'm going to praise the King of Kings. Woo! I'm going to shout, shout, shout. Sing, sing, sing. Praise the King of Kings. I know, I know we're almost home. Almost home. If you believe that, Gonna come back in, sing with me, stand. I can't wait, my brother. We're almost home. I can't wait, my sister. We're almost home. This home that I'm awaiting. Well, it's worth my anticipating. And I can't wait to see him face to face. Woo! Oh, he's saving grace. I'm moving in my way. Shout, I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna praise the King of Kings, I'm gonna shout, 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 sing, 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 praise the King of Kings. I know, I know we're almost home, almost home, yeah, we're almost home. Hallelujah! Give me my hand clap. God is good. I ain't that much voice, but praise the Lord. It is good, isn't it? Yeah. I see some people fanning. Is it hot up in here? She's like, oh yeah, it is hot. <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to be receiving a few uh, members into the church. Where they're not, they haven't been members, but they're getting ready to be real quick. They've been members of the. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? 
Yeah, amen, brother. <laughs> that right there is some good singing, brother. Amen. Let's just give God a hand clap. Susan Deckel, will you come on up here? Let's give God a hand clap for Susan. I just want you to stand here. Just look out to the people. We're going to be praying over you in just a minute, Susan. You know, they she's been such a blessing, her and her husband, since they've been coming. And uh, can I get an amen on that, guys? Amen. We're looking forward to all that God is doing into your life. And we're so glad that you've come to be with us. Amen. Teresa Fralin and Connie Allstock, if you'll come on up. I love that purple. Amen. I love that purple. Look at that purple. Amen. I like that. Amen. Amen. This young lady right here, she says she's got a boyfriend. <laughs> she said, where, where's he at? He's in Scotland. He's in Scotland. But when he comes home, he's coming to church. Hey, come on now. Amen. Amen. I'm glad you got a boyfriend. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Teresa, George, if you'll come on up. We just want to present with, to you a certificate of, of membership right here. Connie, your boyfriend will have to wait till he gets here to get his. That's it. He's slowly coming. He's slowly coming. He, come on now, Teresa. Amen, right there you go. You know God has got His hand on you. And I know He's brought you here to be with us. Amen. You're not here by accident. God wants to use you. And He has been using you. And He's going to use you even more. Now, I remember you told me a few months back, you said, I want to do whatever God's asked me to do. Sure, you know, and fit in wherever God wants me to fit in. And God gets all the glory when we're like that. We have that type of heart. Can I get amen, people? Amen. I want to present to you uh, a few pieces of a, a puzzle because each one of you fits into the bigger picture. Each one of you makes the whole. Without your peace, something's missing, sister. Without your peace, Teresa, something's missing in the body. God wants to use you. Susan, without your peace. And you're so quiet. <laughs> but believe it or not, without your peace, something's missing, sister. God wants to use you. He's got his hand on your husband over there, too. So I'm giving you this right here, and I want you to keep it. And remember that you're part of this body. You're part of the bigger picture. You're part, you fit in with us. You're part of our family. Guys, you, you know when you fit in, don't you? And you know that you fit in and you're part of us. So George and Teresa, if you'll come and just start laying your hands on these people, these ladies, and Lord God, we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, for, for your anointing, Lord, and for working through us, Lord, and giving us boldness, Father, and, and helping us with our faith, Lord God, that we will move forward in your body, Lord God, and be used for your glory, Father. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you want to use us, Lord God. And not only do you want to, you're going to, Lord. We thank you for these young ladies, Lord God, that they want to be used of God. they got a heart for God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. Now fill them with your Holy Spirit. Fill them again with your Holy Spirit, Lord. We thank you for this in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Can I get an amen, church? Amen and amen. And amen. Amen. Go ahead. Okay. For the last about four years, I have been near death three times, almost there. And God has brought me back. And I want to serve Him the best that I can. Amen. 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 
You, you know, and, and plus you got a boyfriend. Yeah, I can't let it <laughs> Then brought her back, in the, in it, and he's blessing you. That's Amen. It. And gave that's you a Scottish gift. You know, that, that's pretty good right there. <laughs> you know, good. they're Scotchmen. <laughs> Let's give God a hand clap. <laughs> Ladies, you can go ahead and be seated. We have a few more people we're going to be bringing in uh, as members. Uh, they're just not here today. But in the next few weeks, we have uh, Kelly and his family are joining the church. You know, the ones with the little children, I'll kind of get an amen. I want children around. And people say, well, don't you, what about the crying? And I'll let them cry. We had care group the other day, man. We had about, I don't know, 10, 12 people here. And those kids are running all around the place. And I was like, don't even worry about it. One of them had a car going around the walls. And I was like, don't even worry about it. Because I like kids. I want them to be around. I want us to have them around. Shows a healthy church when you got children. And you got teens and you got young people. Can I get an amen on that right there? Let's give God a hand clap today. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Amen. George is going to be bringing the word today, and I'm just looking forward to hearing what he has to say. God has been using this man for a long time, and I'm glad that he's here with us. Amen. Come on, brother. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We look forward to uh, all these puzzle pieces coming together to see the beautiful tapestry that God's going to create out of this church. Amen. So each one of us does our part, does our work, and uh, just to see how God's going to bring it all together. Amen. I tell you, the Spirit of God has been moving in here this morning. Amen. I believe God's getting ready to rain down upon this earth like we've never seen. Amen. I believe He wants to rain down tonight, today, right here today. Amen. This morning. And... Um, uh, I just pray that God will open your ears and your, and your hearts to hear and receive what he wants to do for you this morning. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you again for all that you do and continue to do, Lord. We just thank you for your presence, Lord, in this place, that you are moving upon hearts and minds, Lord God, that you're building a church, Lord, that you are raising up a people, Father God. And, Lord, we just pray that you give us ears to hear and eyes to see, Lord God, that anoint the word to wake effectively in us, O oh God, to produce the fruits of your kingdom, Lord God, to, to produce the faith to receive what you have for each one of us. And we, Lord God, that you would touch each and every one in this place this morning in your precious name. Amen. 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 I'm going to try to cut this down a little bit uh, this morning. But a couple weeks ago, I, I taught on the uh, tabernacle and the, the layout of the tabernacle and, and uh, how it represented what Christ came to fulfill. And uh, we looked at the brazen altar, our justification, the laver, our sanctification, the lampstand, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and the showbread, the Word of God, the golden altar of incense, which represents prayer and worship to bring us all into the Holy of Holies, into God's presence and power. And that's what we want. But we have to understand is these things are not electives. These things are not, uh, uh, you know, take it or leave it. These are requirements for every Christian. These are essentials that must become part of our Christian experience and our walk with God if we're going to fulfill his calling and purpose for our lives. And uh, before Jesus ascended into heaven, he gave these instructions to his followers. In Luke 24, 47, he said that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And then in uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, he says if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So even as we're singing this morning uh, those first couple of songs, God wants us to embrace that that we embrace that brazen altar, we embrace that laver, and uh, receive that uh, 
uh, cleansing and purification. Before we can get to the lampstand, we have to first go the way of justification and sanctification. But for the sake of time, let me just say this, that we not only need forgiveness or pardon of sins because of what we've done, but we also need cleansing to purify us, our hearts, from the pollution of that sin that uh, uh, we are born with and uh, is in all of us. And that requires the blood. Both of these require the very blood of Jesus Christ. We need clean hands and pure hearts for the habitation of God's Holy Spirit. In Luke chapter 24, verse 49, he says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. So Jesus was telling the, the, the church, his people, that uh, they were to wait for this promise of the Father because they needed God's power to do what God was saving them to do. In John chapter 14, verse 16 and 17, Jesus says, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. So this initial outpouring of the Holy Spirit required them to tarry in Jerusalem because the things that Christ accomplished on the cross uh, for our redemption were based on the feasts that were given to Israel. Uh, for example, the crucifixion had to take place at the Passover. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit had to come ten days, ten, 10 days later at the Feast of Pentecost. So they had to tarry for those 10 days before they received the promise of God. But once that outpouring took place, there's no need to tarry anymore because the Holy Spirit uh, 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 once was poured out. It's been continually poured out from that time. So we don't need to wait as we can see in the Bible. In Acts chapter 2, verse 41 through 47 on that day of Pentecost, 3,000 souls responded to the preaching of, of Peter, and they got saved. Amen. They were instantly justified. They were cleansed. They were filled with the Spirit, and they continued in the Word of God. They continued in prayer and worship and praise and experienced the manifest presence of God. In other words, they received the whole ball of wax, and they fulfilled every part of that tabernacle all at once. Amen? As Jesus said, the baptism of the Holy Spirit was the promise for the Father, from the Father for empowerment to do the work of the ministry. This means that it's not only necessary for every one of us, it is required for every one of us because we all called with a purpose, a calling, and a ministry. And you cannot fulfill God's calling except by the power of God. Amen? It's not us who does it. It's God doing it through us. Even Jesus had to have the power of the Holy Spirit as he walked as a man to do the things that he did. Amen? And so uh, this means that we have to have everything that God gives us. Amen? All four Gospels and the book of Acts give this as the purpose of Christ's coming and his redeeming work. Let me say that again. They reveal the, one of the primary purposes of Christ's coming, meaning again that if this was his purpose of coming, we all need to have what he gives us. Amen? In Matthew 3.11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. In Mark 1.8, I, I indeed baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In Luke 3.16, Jesus answered and said to them, I indeed baptize you with water, or John, I mean, answered, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. In John 1.33, I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water send on me, upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him. This is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 1, verse 4, 
and being assembled together with him, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. In Acts chapter 11, verse 15, And I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. And then I remember the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Notice what every one of these verses says. Jesus was coming to replace the ritualistic baptism of John. Jesus is the baptizer, and he was coming for the purpose to baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire. And he will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire. In every case, he was coming, and he did exactly that. He will baptize you. In Acts chapter 2, verse 39, the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord God will call. It never changed. It's for everyone. Every one of us. In Romans 8, 30, moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. And whom he called, he justified. And whom he justified, he's he also glorified. You need the Holy Ghost. It was never done away with. If you've been called by God, if you've, you've repented and come to God, this is God's promise to you. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, he said, For by grace you've been saved through faith, and that of, your, of yourselves, it is the gift of God. In John 4.10, Jesus said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who would have said to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living waters. In Acts 2.38, Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. The Holy Spirit is a gift from God. And because it's a gift from God, it is a good and perfect gift. Why would anybody not want a good and perfect gift from a loving and good Father? I don't know about you. If somebody came to me and wanted to give me a good gift, I'm not going to turn it down. I'm not going to spurn it. No, I don't want that. I want every good gift. And if it's coming from God, I want it that much more because he's got gifts that no man can give me. Amen. Yes. Amen. And I think we really... We, 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 we really kind of misunderstand all of this because we make it so difficult. And it's not difficult. Jesus is a baptizer. He will baptize us. When he went to heaven, he asked the Father, send the Holy Ghost. The Father sent the Holy Ghost. He's here. He's here in this place. He's waiting to alight upon us. Amen. It's a gift from God. This means it's free. It's by grace. It's by faith. There's no cost involved. Just our life. Like we've been praying, like we've been singing. Just surrender yourself to Him and receive what He has for us. In Galatians 3, 2, this only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? Where's faith come from? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. How do we receive the Holy Spirit? By faith. Galatians 3, 5. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works the miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? When we hear the word of faith, we receive it. Amen. We receive it. John 7, 37, 39. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Are you thirsty? Are you hungry? 
Amen. Do you have a desire for the things of God? Do you want the gifts of God? Do you want what God has given you already? Just needs to be received. Just need to open your heart and receive it. He who believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living waters. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. To those who believe in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. In Acts chapter 11, verse 15 through 17. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as upon us at the beginning. And then I remember the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If therefore God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed. It's that simple. When we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand God? In Galatians chapter 3, verse 11, but that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Not just for the Jews, not just for the disciples on the day of Pentecost, for everybody now, for everybody. And when the Gentiles heard the word that was preached, they believed and they received the Holy Spirit. Just like that. Amen. No tarrying, no waiting. When they believed, they received. The Holy Spirit came upon them and they began to speak in tongues. They gave evidence that God had entered into them and filled him and gave them that gift. In Galatians 3.22, But the Scripture is confined all under sin, that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. It's not as a gift, it's a promise. Let me tell you something. When God promises something, He can't lie. He can't lie. He cannot tell an untruth. And if God has promised that this was to be given to us, how can we deny that? How can we not want that? How can we not receive that from him? It was the promise of God, again, telling us that the primary purpose of Jesus uh, uh, coming to save us and to change us was for this very purpose, to receive his Holy Spirit and be empowered by him so we can do his work. And it was the fulfillment that God gave all the way back to Abraham. This was a promise back to Abraham that the day would come when God would remove our sin and make the way where he can literally dwell inside of us. That was the promise they were waiting for. We shouldn't be waiting anymore. We don't need to wait. We can have it right now if we'll believe. In Hebrews eleven six, 6, without faith... Whatever things, uh, I'm sorry, without faith it is impossible to believe him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It's all you need to do. Have a little hunger, a little thirst. Have a little desire in you that you want the things of God. Amen. And because you know who God is, you believe who he is, you know that when you ask him, when you, when you come to him, when you seek him, when you seek this spirit, this gift, he will do it. He will give it to you. Amen. Mark eleven twenty four. therefore I say to you, whatsoever things you ask when you pray, when you pray, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Believe when you pray. God's waiting to do it. He's just looking for some hungry hearts. In 1 John 5, 14 to 15, this is the confidence we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, well, this is his will. That's why he sent it. There's no question this is the will of God, that we all receive the Holy Spirit baptism. He says if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition we have asked of him. I like what the Amplified says. We take present possession of what we ask according to his will. You don't have to wait. 
You ask, you believe, and you take, you receive what God has promised. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father. Jesus will baptize us. He came to baptize us. He died so he can baptize us. And we are told, you shall be baptized. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So God is ready. God is waiting. God is desiring to have this Holy Spirit come upon each and every one of us to empower us so that we, as the pieces of that puzzle, all have the power of God to work together in unity under the power of God's Spirit to build up His glorious church and prepare a holy bride for the coming of Lord Jesus Christ. So it's now up to us to receive the promise. In Luke chapter 11, verse 13, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to ask those who ask Him? Let me say it again. How much more will the Father, our heavenly Father, give the Holy Spirit to who? Those who ask Him. That's all you got to do. Ask him in faith, believing, and receive when you pray. If you want to receive the Holy Spirit today, maybe you've never been saved. You don't have to divide it up all in pieces and parts. You can get it all at once. You can, get, you, can, you can get justified and sanctified and, and, and filled with the Spirit. And He'll get you into the Word and into prayer. You can get it all at once. Amen. Maybe you've been filled with the Spirit at some time. But you've never really, you don't pray in tongues. You don't, you, you don't uh, you know, keep that up with you. You need a refill. It's like Pastor was sharing uh, last week. Sometimes we got to get our gas tank filled up again. Amen? Because when you give out, you, you got to you pour back into it. Amen? So you need to come up and you got to get a refill this morning. God wants to pour the Spirit of God and fill you up to overflowing. Amen? Rivers of living waters welling up to eternal life. Welling up to flow out of us. Amen? All we got to do is follow what He said. So let's take a moment, and let's pray right now, wherever you are, whatever you need out of this, we've got to do it exactly what the Bible says. If you've been born again, praise God. If you're not, let's pray right now for you. If you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you have never repented and surrendered your life to Him, let's pray for you right now that God will save your soul right now. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. We just thank you for this great gospel, Father God. And Lord God, right now, and I want you to pray with me. You don't know him right now. Just pray this with me. Lord God, I come before you right now in the name of Jesus. I recognize that I am a sinner, and I need your grace, Lord God. So I confess my sin, Lord God, and I repent right now. I turn away from that sin, and I thank you, Lord God, because I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That he died for me. That he was raised from the dead. And I believe, Lord God, that he has come to wash me from all my sin in his blood. And I receive him right now. I open up my heart. I surrender myself that Jesus Christ will come to me right now and save my soul in the name of Jesus. I put my faith and trust in him that Jesus Christ is my Lord in Jesus' name. Now for the rest of us. If you're here this morning and you're, you want to refill, you, you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, let's prepare the way right now. The Bible says that we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to purify us from all unrighteousness. So right now, in your own words, just, just tell the Lord, Lord God, I don't care what it is, whatever you're dealing with, if there's something you know in you, or even just tell him to search me, oh God, and know my heart. See if there's anything in me that will prevent me from being a vessel for your Holy Spirit. And Father God, whatever it is, we repent right now. We confess our sins, Father God. We lay them at the cross in the name of Jesus. We put them under the blood, Father God. We receive that washing, cleansing blood right now, Lord, to give us clean hands and a pure heart, Father, to prepare the way for your spirit in this vessel. And Lord God, we just thank you that we are forgiven 
And we are clean by the blood of a lamb in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you're here this morning, I want you to come up here. If you need to be refilled, if you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit for the first time, I want you to come up here right now. Because I'm, and come up with an expectation and a desire because God wants to fill you this morning. We, you know, the, the Spirit of God is raining. In fact, uh, uh, Joan, Joan, would you uh, that, let it rain Just quietly? But if you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, this is your opportunity. The Bible says well, all you got to do is ask and believe. We also see examples where they laid hands on them and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. We're going to do both. Amen. So if you want the Holy Spirit tomorrow, this morning, if you need a refill to be filled up again, come on up and let's receive it now. Just come up here, lift up your hands, and just begin to ask God to fill you, to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and power. Amen. To receive that anointing this morning. You don't want to go out of this place empty. Amen. We want to receive what God has for us. So this is your opportunity. The Spirit's been moving in this place this morning. Our worship time, I mean, the Holy Ghost was thick in this place. God wants the rain down upon us. God wants every single person in this church to not just be saved, but to be filled with His power so that we can be the people He's called us to be and do the things He's called us to do. Amen. Anybody here this morning, this is your opportunity. Will you stand with me today? Stand with me. Yeah, Lord, we bless your name, Lord. We thank you, Father. We bless you, Lord. Just start worshiping him in here to now. Yeah, Lord God, we bless you. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. Yeah, Lord Jesus, we bless your name. We bless your name. If you want a touch of the Holy Spirit, just make your way up here today. You're standing and you're just waiting to come up and you're saying, Lord God, I'm a little bit nervous, Lord God. Come on up today. Come on up today. Be blessed of the Lord and say yes to the Lord. Say, I want to be refilled of the Lord today. Just come on up today. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name, in the name, feel the winds of your spirit. We bless your name, Lord. The heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. Feel the winds of your love. Feel the winds of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear.